In the world of fighter jets, the giants usually win. America, Russia, Europe. These superpowers dominate the skies with their cutting-edge technology, massive defense budgets, and decades of experience in military aviation. Their projects cost billions, involve armies of engineers, and take decades to go from concept to reality. The scale is almost unimaginable. Factories the size of small towns and teams working around the clock. So when Sweden, a small Nordic country with a population smaller than many native cities, announced it would build its own world-class fighter, experts scoffed. They said it was impossible for a nation of Sweden's size and resources. The idea seemed almost naive. How could Sweden compete with the titans of the aerospace world? Building a modern fighter jet is one of the most complex engineering fleets imaginable, requiring advanced knowledge, a huge industrial base, and deep pockets. Every component, from the engine to the avionics, must be world-class. Most countries either failed or joined big international projects to share the burden. The risks and costs were simply too high for most to go it alone. The consensus, Sweden was dreaming, and the era of small nations building top-tier fighters was forward. The world watched, expecting another failed experiment. But Sweden wasn't trying to outspend the giants, it was going to out-ink them. Instead of following the old playbook, they set out to rewrite the rules. The engineers at Saab, the company behind the Gripen, had a different vision, a fighter that was smart, efficient, and affordable. They wanted a jet that could adapt quickly and be maintained easily, even in tough conditions. This vision was rooted in Sweden's philosophy of self-reliance and clever innovation. For decades, Sweden had solved problems with creativity, not just cash. Instead of building a bigger, more extensive jet, they aimed for something different, they focused on agility, versatility, and cost-effectiveness. The Griffin would be a new kind of fighter, one that to do more with less. It would be able to operate from short runways in harsh weather and with minimal support. It would challenge the old rules and prove that a small nation could still make a world-class jet. The Griffin was designed to punch above its weight. The world expected Sweden to fail or produce a second-rate plane. Few believed they could actually pull it off. But the Gripen was about to surprise everyone. It would soon earn respect on the world stage. It was designed not just to survive, but to thrive in a world dominated by giants. The Gripen would become a symbol of what's possible when innovation meets determination. The impossible fighter jet was about to become a reality. Against all odds, Sweden was ready to change the game. This is the story of how Sweden changed the game and how the Gripen became a global contender respected by air forces around the world, and why the Greppen matters more than ever today, as nations suit smarter, more adaptable solutions for the challenges of modern air combat. Sweden's long-standing history of neutrality and self-reliance has deeply shaped its unique defense doctrine, setting it apart from many other nations. Surrounded on all sides by larger, sometimes unpredictable powers, Sweden needed a military that could defend its vast rugged territory alone, without relying on outside help. The Swedish Air Force demanded a jet that could operate from short damaged runways, even highways, making it possible to disperse and survive in the event of attack. It had to be easy to maintain in harsh freezing conditions, with only a tiny ground crew, sometimes just a handful of conscripts or reservists. Survival depended on rapid turnaround and high sortie rates, one jet flying many missions a day, always ready to return to the fight at a moment's notice. The Griffin was designed for operational independence, not luxury or comfort, with every feature focused on function and reliability. While other nations built complex hangar teams, Sweden wanted a rugged, practical tool of war, something that could fly far from the safety of a base. The goal was ambitious, a true multi-goal fighter capable of air-to-air -air combat ground attack and reconnaissance, all in one agile, adaptable platform. This versatility was absolutely essential for a small air force, where every aircraft and every pilot had to count. The name Gripen, the Griffin, symbolized mastery of both sky and ground, a mythical creature for a modern challenge. The big idea wasn't just to build another jet, but to create a smarter, more adaptable, ready for any trap from blizzards to battlefields, and able to operate where others could be. In a world of uncertainty, the Gripen was Sweden's bold answer, a 
a symbol of resilience, ingenuity, and national pride. For decades, the world of fighter jets was governed by a strict playbook. Bigger was always seen as better. Complexity was equated with capability, and only the wealthiest nations could even dream of competing in this high stakes arena. The result? Massive twin-engine jets packed with the latest technology. Impressive, but with price fags that soared ever higher, making them almost unattainable for most. Only a select few countries could afford these machines, and buyers often found themselves entangled in political strings and long-term dependencies. Maintenance was a logistical nightmare, demanding specialized teams, rare parts, and constant attention just to keep the jets flying. Training hours were limited by the staggering costs per flight, making it difficult for pilots to get the experience they needed. The market became an exclusive club, dominated by the US, Russia, and Europe, leaving most of the world on the outside looking in. Development was painfully slow and bogged down by bureaucracy. Jets often took decades to reach the runway, and by then, their technology was already falling behind. Buyers had little control or access to the jet's inner workings, with critical systems kept off limits and upgrades tightly restricted. The system was designed to favor the industry giants, leaving almost no room for innovation or for smaller, more agile players to make their mark. These were the old rules, high cost, high complexity, and painfully slow progress, all at the expense of flexibility and accessibility. But Sweden was about to break every single one of them rewriting the future of fighter jets forever. Saab and Sweden tore up the old rule book. Instead of bigger is better, they made the Griffin small, light, and single engine, cheaper to build, fly, and maintain. But small didn't mean weak. The Griffin was agile, fast, and deadly in a dogfight. Saab focused on smart simplicity. The jet's open architecture software made upgrades easy and affordable. New weapons and sensors could be integrated quickly, keeping the grip and cutting edge. Sweden didn't just sell jets. They offered partnerships, sharing technology and know-how with banks. This empowered smaller nations to build and improve their own jets. But Saab's modular design and digital development slashed timelines and costs. The grip and could evolve rapidly, staying ahead of threats without expensive overhauls. In every way, the grip was a fighter for the digital age. It was a radical 21st century answer to 20th century problems. And it worked. Brazil's search for a new fighter in 2013 was a turning point. Competing against giants like the FA-18 and Rafale, the Gripen seemed like an underdog, but Sweden offered more than a jet. They offered a partnership and technology transfer. Brazil chose the Gripen, shocking the industry. Hundreds of Brazilian engineers trained in Sweden, then returned home to help build the new grip and EF. Brazilian companies like Embraer became key partners, boosting local industry and jobs. The first Brazilian-made grip and flew in 2024, a symbol of true collaboration. Brazil gained not just jets, but the skills and autonomy to support and improve them. The grip and model broke the old supplier-customer hierarchy, creating a real partnership. Brazil's bold bet paid off, inspiring other nations to rethink what's possible. The Swedish way had changed the game. Could the Gripen work with NATO? That was the big question. As countries like the Czech Republic and Hungary adopted it, the answer became clear. In major exercises, Swedish Gripens flew alongside US bombers, sharing data and tactics seamlessly. American commanders praised the Gripen's advanced sensors and data links to its ability to operate from rough airfields in press NATO allies. The Gripen proved it could be a team player, cost-effective, capable, and fully interoperable. It wasn't just a Swedish solution, it was a NATO-ready fighter. The doubters were silenced. As war rages in Ukraine, the need for resilient, modern fighters is urgent. The Gripen's ability to operate from damaged runways and highways makes it ideal for Ukraine's embattled air force. Its quick turnaround and small crew requirements mean more jets in the air, less vulnerable on the ground. Sweden has prepared spare parts 